All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started just a little bit early on today. Amen. Amen. I want to say good morning to everyone and uh, pray that uh, everybody has had a wonderful, wonderful night. <clears throat> our third, our Fridays uh, are getting up a little bit harder uh, for those of us that attend the Thursday night class for singles. <laughs> it's like we relish in that moment for a minute and then it puts us to sleep. So hope everybody had a wonderful night and want to say thanks to everybody that joined in with us on last night. Uh, well, we are on our final day for our session uh, for the first week of uh, this particular session, as we are talking about that, uh, learning how to hear from God. And uh, I hope that you guys have uh, really been, um, you know, enjoying your hearing, you know, those different things that you've been hearing. Um, maybe it's things that have already been, you know, a part of your life. And if it is, you know, it is, you want to definitely continue that, that moving forward. But if it's been new things that if you, you've heard, I pray that you're able to implement some new things in your life as well. Amen. Amen. And uh, so we're going to open back up again on today like we did yesterday. I really, really enjoyed the open dialogue of conversation, you know, with just talking about those areas that you are fasting in. You know, I think it's very good to um, to be able to talk about those things and, you know, sometimes even, you know, get a little bit more clarity or insight into it just by sharing. And you'll be amazed at what sharing does for you. I was thinking about Kathy yesterday and I said, Lord, I, I see you just blessing her socks off, you know, because for a long time, she did not, you know, really just talk in the program. She's been coming to my program forever, ever since I, almost ever since I started. Uh, her mom actually introduced her to one of my girl talks and, and she's been coming ever since then. And this has been really the first time she's really, you know, been talking out loud. So I can only imagine, you know, what she's hearing in her spirit, you know, and, uh, and that's one of the things I want you to guys to definitely get used to is hearing your voice a lot of times, you know, don't uh, just allow all the thoughts in your head just to be running, but be, be confident and allow those words to flow through you, to, you know, get those things out of you uh, so that you can, um, you know, find a place of, of, of hearing, uh, even challenge yourself as to whether you're hearing the right things or not, or if you just need to tweak it a little bit. So I think it's a great thing. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, open up in prayer. I want to say hello to everyone first before we get started. And um, there may be others that will join in a little bit later with us. And um, we will definitely already be engaging in the conversation. And everybody's free to jump in. Y'all don't forget that the chat box is available over to the side. If you want to put your comments over to the side and, you know, come on in with us, you know, uh, during that time. Or you can raise your hand. You can use the little uh, symbol to raise your hand. And we'll continue our conversation. Well, I want to say good morning to Mrs. Delcina Mangrum. I want to say good morning to you. Uh, Mrs. Donisha Warren, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Uh, amen. Mrs. Jackie Hall, good morning to you. Uh, Mrs. Karina good Smith, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Mrs. Amen, amen. Katambra Jeffries, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, Mrs. Dorothea Taylor, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Shannon McCray, morning. good morning. Amen, good morning yeah. to you. Amen. Mrs. Sheena Fight, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Um, Mrs. Chick Holmes, good morning to you. And uh, Mrs. Shirley Clark, want to say good morning to you guys. <clears throat> amen, amen. All right. All right, well, let's go ahead and go in for a word of prayer, and then we will move forward as God gives us utterance on today. All right, all right, Father, we say thank you so much once again. Uh, we just, Father, we just fall into your presence these mornings, and because we haven't found any better place to be in than in, you know, that perfect place that you have for us. Father, you told us that in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And there are so many pleasures, Lord God, at your right hand forevermore. And uh, Father, we come declaring this is the day that you've made and we're rejoicing in this day with you. Uh, Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for all of the conversations that we're having you know, it builds us up and it strengthens us, us and it helps to check us and it helps us to bring accountability with ourselves. And for that, we say thank you so much, Lord God. We thank you for the Dream Builder family. 
uh, Father, we have literally become a family, you know, a, a cyber family here. And uh, we couldn't have chosen a better group of people to do life with. So for that, we say thank you. I pray your blessings over all of our mentees, you know, all of those that have been here in times past, those that will come even later on. We just pray your blessings continually upon this ministry and uh, everything that you're doing in the life of your people. I pray, Lord God, that as the days roll around, that we will continue to uh, walk in the confidence that you have, you know, um, uh, placed inside of us. We're reminding ourselves to stand fast in the liberty to which you've made us free and don't go back into those places called bondage, you know? So I pray that you will keep our mouths ready, you know, let that, uh, that tongue be like the pen of a ready writer. It comes in to help write the composition of our lives. So Father, we thank you so much for the power that dwells within us. Some of us don't even know the power that's there, but it is yet to be revealed. So we wait on the promises of God through faith and believe, Lord God, that all things are possible to him that believe. So Father, as we open up even on this day, I pray, Lord God, that you would put the right words in our hearts, put the right words in our mouths, um, ask the right questions, uh, Father, so that we can engage in conversation with you. I pray, Lord God, that you would even speak through me on this morning uh, to allow me to share nuggets of wisdom to your, uh, to your people and uh, not only let it feed them, but let it feed me too. Let it be a win-win situation all the way around. And Father, as we get ready to leave today, I pray, pray a special blessings as, blessing as we go out into the community, into our families, as we are doing life with others. Father, that we remember this 10% that we are off offering up. <clears throat> Bring those things back to our remembrance when we need it the most. Lord God, put a, put, a, put a word in our mouths that we not be struggling for answers or struggling for, you know, um, different uh, commentations to have with others. But Lord, get, put, us that, put that word in us. And uh, Father, we just bless you today. Bless all of us as we get ready to come and go to and fro. Keep us safe, Lord God, until we meet again. And we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. All right, well, we're gonna um, move forward on today. Uh, yesterday, we started all week long. We've been engaging in conversation about uh, strengthening our hearing. And one of the places that I will say that you will begin to start hearing more clearly is when you start praying. You know, when you pray, you get a chance to hear you know, the matters of your heart, because most of the time, whatever is in you, whatever concerns are there with you, that's what's going to begin to start coming out. Uh, one of the great things, a lot of times we're trying to hear the voice of God so that we can know the right thing to do uh, with, with our lives and with others as well. And one of the great benefits of a child of God is that we do have, uh, we, we have, I do believe the power of prayer. And we have the ability to hear. So a lot of times when we are engaging uh, in relationship with people, don't forget to implement prayer in, into, the, into the relationship. Because in prayer is where you get to hear what people are. You get a chance to hear their heart. You get a chance to hear the concerns that they have. It gives you an opportunity to serve, you know, in areas that you may not have you know, been serving in in times past, especially when it comes down to relationships and, uh, but just engage them in prayer. And sometimes you need to let them hear you praying, you know, um, and, and once they hear that, maybe it will, you know, cause them to start thinking about a lot of things. If you're dealing with individuals that may not, um, you know, be at that place where they're listening and, and li listen, I want you, I want you to think about this. A lot of times when you're talking to individuals and you're saying, well, that it seems like they're not hearing what I'm saying. I think they're hearing you. But they got too much, too many other voices in their ear. And what you're saying may be making them more confused. And so you have to pray that God will silence the noises that are going on with them, okay? And give them a ear to hear what it is that the spirit is saying. A lot of times you trying to talk to them, Christianese or whatever, they're not understanding what you're saying. 
And we have to become, you know, all things to all men, especially if you're in ministry, you have to learn how to minister. I even think about worship leaders, you know, they have sometimes a challenging, you know, um, uh, place of service uh, when they're trying to engage the audience to come in and worship with them. You know, you have to be creative enough through your song, uh, through a lot of different things to just get people engaged, to open up their hearts so that they can begin to start hearing the word of God. Um, I love the worship part of service because it comes in to wash us and it comes in to cleanse us. It comes in to get us into a place. And I love to be around worshipers that are skilled in bringing people into a place of worship as well understanding that's what's where your people skills are going to come in because you understand that people have been going through life you know some people are um you know being sensitive to the spirit the lord will give you the right things to do and the right words to say being able to hear from god and it causes you just don't know it causes lives to begin to start turning around because what you want to do is get them prepared to hear the word of god you know so those are just, you know, some things with that. So I want to open back up this morning. We had a great conversation yesterday talking about, you know, um, the areas that you're fasting in. What is it that you believe that is, you know, high on the list with you uh, during this particular time um, uh, of fasting with you? So I'm going to open up the lines for uh, anyone that would like to go forward. And I want to know, is anybody using the sticky notes? And anybody using it, that's my assignment this weekend. I want to start getting those sticky notes up around so that I will keep my mind, you know, um, uh, still in one place. Anybody want to share this morning? Anybody, have you guys enjoyed the uh, session this week, the sessions this week? Shelly said, I'm getting them today. Amen. 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 Everybody quiet this morning. Hello. <laughs> Sheena, yes, ma'am. Good morning, Sheena. Uh, good morning. I'm going to make my ass quick because I'm driving. Okay. Um, I uh, been, you know, just kind of, you know, uh, meditating every morning before I, I get up actually early. So I my prayer time when I get up at three o'clock in the morning and I just pray and talk, talk to him, you know, talk to God, you know, uh, while I'm driving up until I call because it gives me, a, it gives me that one-on-one -on -one quiet time with him. So I use that time to talk to him when I get up in the morning up until our call. And uh, I just noticed the change that's going on with me and um, I pray that, you know, he um, allows me to understand the change that's going on. I know it doesn't make sense to me, but I just, you know, um, I'm kind of all over the place right now. So just bear with me, but um, just to help me to understand, you know, um, everything that's going on in my life and my son, you know, he's having to go through the change as well, but to help me to understand him at times because he might get a little, you know, um, frustrated. He's worrying about friends and who he's going to have to play with when we move in. But um, I just pray that everything works out with me, you know, in the job, just trying to figure out the city and um, things like that and just trying to get adapted to everything. Um, and I believe, you know, I've, I've been, you know, everything happens for a reason. I think I've been trying to come up here for a while and it just happened. And when things like that happen, it happens on his terms and not on our terms. And when I tried to do it on my own, I never had a chance to get up here. But the way it happened, I wasn't prepared for it. And I knew it was God because when things like this happen, you're never going to be prepared for these things. And so now, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed and my, you know, I've been reaching out to my lifelines, you know, talking to them and things like that. And there's been moments where I've cried because I get a little frustrated and emotional. But um, the thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm not in a comfortable situation anymore. So I have to understand that, you know, uh, 
I, I'm, I'm moving on to something bigger, something more yeah. better. And I have to understand that, you know, um, God is challenging me right now. And he wouldn't put on, he wouldn't put this much on me if he felt like I, I couldn't do it. So, um, you know, just trying to adapt to the change and I'm trying to listen to him because I don't know what it is, what to do right now. Now that I'm in this situation, um, I've been, tr like I said, I've been trying to come up here. Now I have to figure out, okay, what it is that you want me to do? You know, uh, you know, I'm trying to just figure it all out. And, um, and I, I just, I don't know, it's just a, just a lot right now. And I feel like, uh, my, my, uh, once I get settled in and I find, uh, I, uh, I'll be able to understand what it is that he wants. But right now I'm all over the place. I'm trying to understand this new job, you know, um, I'm asking him to, you know, help me to understand the new job that I am and understand this city. I know I'm saying it for re repetitive things, but, um, and I'm also, you know, going through a certain situation with the, with the individual male, you know, I'm asking him to help me to get over this, this male that's been toxic, you know, in my life. And, I'm just trying to, you know, overcome a lot of things and, and talk to him about a lot of stuff. It just seemed like a lot of stuff has been, you know, going on between, you know, my mom, you know, she, she's sick and just, you know, how things happen when you're trying to move on and other stuff that seems to kind of interfere with you trying to get your life together. And it just seems like mm -hmm. stuff just keeps piling, keeps piling up on me. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to use this as a fresh start. You know, this is a fresh start for me, um, you know, and I want to, uh, and I tell my son, you know, he's been in trouble in school. This is a fresh start for him. You know, um, it's been so much, you know, I've been trying to get help with him, get counseling for him. So it's a lot of things that I'm working on for the both of us. Hopefully we can seek some counseling together so that we can, you know, use this as a fresh start because, there's things that he do that I don't understand, and I'm sure there's things that I do that he doesn't understand. So mm -hmm. I, I, I want us to, me and my son, to come up here and and um, and use it as a fresh start. But I'm also uh, been reaching out to um, resources, trying to see what it is that we can do to get get some counseling because um, it, it was at one point where I was trying to send him away because it just got out of hand with his behavior mm -hmm. in school, and mm -hmm. uh, like I say. It's just been a lot with my child in school. It's just his behavior in school. He doesn't act like like that at home, but only in school. I don't know what it is about the school, but his behavior um, had put had, has been so much on me to where I just was trying to figure out what what residence I can send him to it. And um, he didn't get accepted to that program because of his write up that he had, and so. I said, well, maybe it's just not meant for him to be there. Maybe this is something that we have to work out together. And yeah. uh, maybe the environment, I, I, maybe it was the environment, you know, that he was in. Maybe us coming up here would help him uh, change his ways. You know, just a whole bunch of things, you know, dealing with him because he is a boy. He is um, 12 years old and, um, you know, um, he is kind of curious and doing his own thing. But um, I can only do so much, you know. And so um, I just, you know, pray that when he comes up here, that he, he does well up here as well. But um, anyway, that's what I've been using my intermittent fast before. I know that was a lot. It was kind of rumbling everywhere, but um, there's, I just couldn't put it in any other way. And I just felt like I had to say, say something. So that's what my intermittent fasting coming in is just trying to um, find purpose, balance, life. And, um, you know, all of the above, because uh, right now, uh, my mind is in a lot of directions right now. And um, I'm just not in that, you know, in, in that set place right now. Yeah, I haven't figured it out yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. That's what it is. I'm still trying to figure it all out, but it'll come. Yeah. Sheena, that, that, that is a lot, but it's okay. You know, I, I look at it like this, you know, that that's a place of gratitude that I'm still in the number. I'm still, you know, fighting through these things. But I will say to you, especially when it comes down, and I understand that, especially about the children, uh, when you got a ship called your kids going through stuff and you're not married, a relationship is the last thing you need. 
It's about prioritizing things. We think, especially as singles, that if I can just, you know, get a positive male figure in here, that it will help him, that is not the best time to bring a relationship in. Now, if it happens, that's a totally different thing. But as far as trying to just date and do things like that, those are two ships that you do not pass, need passing at the same time. I think one of the first things that you can do is um, put right all those things down that you talked about this morning, those areas of concern that you have. And I think the biggest thing is once you get settled in the city, because that, that's stressful driving in the morning time. I don't know if you know it or not. Um, it may be relaxing. You get a chance to have some quiet time. You have time to yourself, but it's, it's, it's stressful too because you're having to get up that early in the morning and you're in between two different places. I think a lot of things will begin to start settling down once you get into the city. And one of the first things that I would recommend that you do is find you a local church to get involved in. Don't just get connected to any church. Make sure you find a church that has a children's, a youth, a strong youth department. That's where your mentors are gonna come at. And your mentors are not gonna come from a relationship right now. Your mentors are come, gonna come from the, from the uh, local churches. And I think one of the great ones that I think would be good for you would be one community because you're very young, Sheena, your son is young. They have a very, very, very strong children's ministry over there. Uh, they have a very strong, uh, even the pastor. I mean, I, I just love the whole setup out there. And Irvin is not that far from Plano. They're actually in the Plano area. So they're not, they're not that far from one another. So I would definitely say, get settled in the city. You know, you only have like a couple of more weeks to go. I think 26 is the day you said that you were coming in. So I would say start using that, that as a time to start prioritizing things, you know, get those, get those things that you may not have the, the uh, you may have a sticky, you can put sticky notes out where you are right now because you need to stay focused on things. And those are words that you need to put up. You need to put focus. You need to put prioritize, okay? And it, I would even put that, that word up there, family matters. You know exactly what it means. And these are things that's going to keep me balanced, safety, protection, provision, all of those things. And from there, you'll begin to start writing your affirmations and affirmations are what it is that you would like to take place. You know, because at first, remember on our dream, our fasting manifestation, you got to talk about what it is that you are desiring to manifest during your time of fasting and if you'll get that that image up of that seed, I think I did have it. I think I, I had it up um, last night. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, it's an image of a seed. And if you will just get this in front of you and just keep reminding yourself that it's working. It may not look like it is, but when you're unfolding a lot of things in life, you got to give it time. And you also have to trust the process. I think you're doing a wonderful thing by joining in on a lot of the programs. But one of the things that you may want to do is kind of like what the what the group was talking about last night. Start getting ready to get involved in something, Sheena. Uh, once you get it, you start getting involved in things. You have people that are coming coming in to help you to be accountable for. Uh, different things that are going on in your life and they're there to kind of help watch over you a lot more too. You don't want to go into this new season trying to do a lot of things all by yourself because you don't have to do that. You got you got family, you got you got us and hopefully you'll get connected to a a local, you know, congregation in the area or whatever, you know, to help you to grow. Uh, when you move into the city, um, especially one, you know, like a metroplex like this, um, it's not it's not the easiest thing to do, Sheena, but but you can do it because other people have done it. Got to remember, it's going to be a different mindset when you come into the city. Things that you may have done before, you have to allow yourself, a, you know, time to start washing that stuff off. Things that you've done in time past, play paces that you've gone before, especially if you didn't enjoy the outcome of it there. You definitely don't want to bring those, you know, those things into uh, your life here. I was looking for that, looking for that picture, but I can't find it right now. And uh, just start changing, just change of a mind. I just want a different mindset. And then you also want to pay attention to, you know, maybe people that you, you know, um, 
if there are if there are people in your life that may not be going necessarily in the direction that you want to go in in this season. Remember, I always say don't throw anybody away, but you can put them in another chair. Because if you're needing people that's going to help you to grow, help you to get to this next phase that you're in, because you don't know where you're going, you need somebody else that can come in and help you lead the way. So I would say make sure to uh, put those put those things in another place and begin to start uh, filling yourself up with things that you need. It may not be stuff that you want to do, it may be kind of boring, whatever the case would be, but you have to develop a appetite and a palate. Uh, for that, you know, for that, for that new season that's going to take place in your life. And just remember, if you're in a season of discovery right now, that doesn't last always. There's going to be a season where the Lord takes you into a place of visitation, you know, to where you start dreaming about different things. But Sheena, I want to say to you, you've come a long way from, I think I met you, what, maybe two years ago, two, three years ago. And you come a long, long way, Sheena. It may not be moving as fast as you would like for it to, but you're in the right direction. And I always say you're showing up. You're doing one of the greatest things that you could do. You're showing up, you're being in place. The rest of it is just unfolding different things in your life. Keep, a, keep people around you. That's another word that you can get on your, on your board is accountability. You need to get you some accountability partners around you, uh, people that will help you to keep your mindset straight. And, you know, when you start getting off course, that they are strong enough to where they can help to put, you know, help to, you know, usher you back in the right direction, you know. So always bring people around you that you respect. Uh, Cause if you got people around you that you're conversating with and you don't respect the lifestyle that they have, those are the folks I'm talking about. You need to put over there in fourth chair. Any of us, if you have people in your life that you don't necessarily respect the way that they live their life, but they are your friends. Remember that stuff is on, on you too. And probably the agitation or the paper on the floor is bothering you only. And so sometimes you have to on purpose move those things around so that you can start getting a different view of things in life, you know, and uh, you'll be amazed. And everything starts with a seed and you have to do it one day at a time and you're going to have to confront the part that keeps you around what you don't like being around. Cause I'm going to tell you something. When you make the shift, your son is going to make the shift. The one that rocks the cradle rules the world. You ever want to see change take place in your life? Remember, we're putting us on the altar. We're not putting them on the altar. We're putting us on the altar. And we, when we start making the change, the people around us start making changes too. Because they're watching us. We're writing a story. He's just a child. He's still, he's still reading stories and trying to decide, am I going to follow my peers or am I going to follow what my mom has taught me? But you want to give them something good to good to look at as well, but we've definitely got you, you know, on the radar with that, uh, you know, praying with you and, you know, every step of the way, Sheena, and I just say, just continue to keep walking it out, but get those visual aids in front of you, you know, don't squander uh, the time of fasting, but get those aids in front and, and listen to God during the quiet times, you know, the more you start shutting down files, the more God can speak, the more you can hear him talking to you, and thank you for your transparency, Sheena, with that. Thank you for that. Anybody else this morning? What are you, what are you, what are your, what are you fasting about? Uh, let me, let me see the comments that's been going on in here. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, uh, Kathy says she's using, yes, I'm using sticky notes. Um, uh, uh, people saying they're getting them today. Yeah, using sticky notes. She's a sticky note queen in diff different colors. That's a good idea. Having different different colors for different things. That, that's good. Me too. Sticky notes. I write everything down. Uh, seeing positive affirmations I've written down makes it makes my day. A constant reminder: God is good and in control. Um, yes, Kathy. I'm even sharing positive affirmations at work. That's a great way. Uh, to uh, get active is when you start giving it to other people, helping other people. Uh, I'm even sharing affirmation at work. Oh, they say, here she go. <laughs> Amen, they praying for you. Uh, but bet they began to copy them down, though, uh, though uh, keep doing <laughs> so keep doing it. 
not about them, it's about you. Amen. Uh, yes, Kathy, I've made a decision to begin using the sticky note ministry. <laughs> Amen. Not for them, but for myself. Like Miss Dale said, to remind me and put uh, God is good and in control. Uh, uh, Shelly said, praying for you, Sheena. You have a lot happening because he's positioning you to receive a lot. That's good. Be patient, breathe in, breathe often. Uh, enjoy the positives uh, more than the negatives. Amen. I love that. I love it. Anybody else this morning? What are you? What are you? What are you? Um, what are the things that you're working on during your time of fasting? I know it may take everybody a minute to kind of think about some things. Time of fasting. All right, how many of you, and I know this may be kind of a, uh, a it may be a, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to say it. How many of you are having problems knowing the difference between God's voice and your voice and the enemy's voice? Your voice. How many of you have problems knowing the difference between the two? Okay. So everybody's hearing clearly. That's that's a good, that's a good thing. You're hearing clearly. Are you guys getting more direction? For um, how many of you can honestly say that God has caused you to make a shift during this time? During this time of fact, you were going in one direction, but the Lord calls you to shift and go another direction. As Shelly said, I'm starting to figure out the voice now. I'm hearing him. I believe that, Shelly. I, I can see a lot of your actions and I can tell that. Sabrina said, if I'm busy and I hear a voice, it's more difficult for me to discern yeah I have to get quiet then in order to know where that sits with me that that's good Shelly were you saying something I saw somebody's mic come open maybe not no I ma that's not me. I'm sorry okay <laughs> that's okay uh Shirley said uh I'm able to hear, hear him sometimes it's my listening Amen. And, and Shirley, do you mean you'll follow through? <laughs> you hear him, but you don't do it. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Amen. Kathy said, I some, sometimes I go back and forth with it. That's, that's an honest one. Dale said, I think when I'm doing something out of the ordinary for some reason, I feel it's God telling me to trust him. It's not my will, but God's will. Amen. Sometimes he will nudge us uh, to kind of get us, you know, back in place with some things. Yeah, letting you know you're going in the wrong direction. Anybody else? I like that. I like what Sabrina says. She says, if I'm busy and I hear a voice, it's more difficult for me to discern. Let me ask you this. Does it bring, does it cause confusion to take place with you? to where your words get jumbled up. And whereas you're trying to stay, you know, in that in that vein, all of a sudden you find confusion that's there. Karen, what did the question to me directly? Or just No, I was just asking just asking in general. Okay. But you're more than welcome to answer it, Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so for me, truly, if I'm, for example, sometimes at work, um, God is speaking to me, you know, if I'm just in the middle of doing things and, you know, kind of in the vein of, you know, just getting everything done. And then he's um, talking um, to me in different ways. And sometimes like it's very loud and clear and I doubt I have to write it down because, you know, I know because of that topic or that I'm hearing, I know I've been talking with God about that before so I know that you know there's something that he's telling me but sometimes when I'm busy and I have so many thoughts in my mind that my mind is completely full with that and God is trying to to tell me something that's when I mean like I have to first of all get my mind quiet and and kind of you know getting rid of all these thoughts 
because then I'm more so confused because I'm just, you know, my mind is just overwhelmed, so to speak. I was actually doing this morning just a meditation for it because I had so many thoughts. And if I do see myself in that in that state where I'm so overwhelmed with just so many thoughts, because as she also said, right, sometimes there's a lot going on in our lives. And when I do that, I know I hear him more clearly because I don't have so much clutter in my mind. So that's when confusion hits when I do have that. So, you know. Yeah, I can feel you there because, uh, and that just lets you know, it's not going to be clear all the time. Yeah. You know, you would think, sometimes we think that, well, I should be hearing more from God here. You know, I think a lot of it is like an unfolding, you know, like say, for instance, God gives you instructions on one thing. And remember um, the Lord, he said he prophesies in parts to you. He's not going to give you more than what you can handle. And once you will, trust him for the first thing then god can give you the next thing that's how you see people it seems like man it seems like everything they touch turn to gold or whatever it's just i think that they have practiced the art of listening a little bit more than someone else that's the only thing that makes us different you know uh we have a lot of the same abilities but it's our hearing that's either dull or sharp and, and all of us could, you know, use some washing every now and then, you know, to strengthen my hearing, strengthen my ear, you know, help me to, you know, sharpen my gifts with a lot of things. One of the things that I noticed um, last night, we were on our call with the uh, singles, Singles Let's Talk. Um, there are individuals that are, um, that are um, out of sync ministry wise, uh, meaning that they have, they're not, they're not literally serving at this particular time. They probably serving in their homes, but there is a desire to serve again in other, other areas, but they just didn't know where they wanted to serve at. And what I always say during those times is, is, is to um, um, pay attention to the baby leaping in your belly, what you get excited about, you know, because it's about that serving while you wait uh, we had a conversation about, you know, in single time when you're single to make sure you serve during those times when you're waiting on God. And I think Zach gave a excellent, excellent illustration of how there was something that he wanted very bad. And this thing was, you know, really tearing his heart apart. And he had had to make a decision as to whether he was going to go to the club or he was going to go to the church because this thing was hurting so bad. You know how sometimes you just want to get this thing off of you and you want to get it off. And he said he made the decision to come to the church. And from there, it was like, I'm, 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 I'm at the right place at the right time. The right people to speak, the right person is speaking to my life. And from there, I take the words because my hearing is there. And listen, you can be in confused states but when you get in the presence of God, God clears that stuff up because you get a chance to move away from all the other noise. And then the Lord starts ordering yourself. He already, he's already taken into consideration all the confusion that's going to go on in the midst of it all. But what causes the confusion to simmer down is when you get planted in the right places. It's like at one season, it's like these things were just off the chain. It was like I had a whole too many voices. But when you get in the right place, there, there's an action that needs to be taken to get into a place where you can start serving. Because once you get over there and start serving, you forget about the troubles that are going on with you or you don't think about them as much as you were before. And he talked about how there was a domino effect of things that were going on in his life. The Lord just kept opening doors, kept opening doors. And in the end, he actually got what it was that he was praying about before. But he talked about also about how he, he, he appreciated the process of what God did for him because he taught him more patience. He taught him how to love people. He taught him about the ministry that was coming up in his life to be ready to walk through those doors he had to give him a listening ear when it came down to forgiveness, all of those things so that he could follow the voice of God. And sometimes you could be going in one direction, but it's something about when you start connecting up with the right people, it has a tendency to turn you around from some places that you've been in because it's like, 
all right, God is ready to answer these, answer, you know, your prayers, and you want to make sure you're at the right location in order to get those things. So sometimes it does call for us, you know, um, if we can't hear clearly, we need to get to a place that can help us to hear, to pull those things down. And you can't have two or three things going on at one time. You know, I think, you know, getting that, that, um, that place of, of discernment, that place of settlement in your heart, I think that's going to be a very important, you know, uh, place to be in. I know for me in my life, it has worked for me every time. When I first came to Christ, you know, I knew that the stuff that was on my heart and was on my mind was so heavy. And one of the first things was, that I did was um, I, received, I, I, I received the calling just to come in, to come in from out of the rain, and I got in there and I got myself planted. Same thing happened. Somebody was speaking, uh, somebody at the right time. They caught my attention. They caught my heart. Remember, I always say the fivefold ministry comes after you. They caught my attention. And I sat down at his feet for a long, long time. I had so much stuff that needed to be unraveled. I had my kids. I had my finance. I had the job situation. I had family thing. I had a lot of stuff that I needed to unravel. And I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it by myself. But I noticed that the Bible said the steps of a good man, they've already been ordered by the Lord. God put me in the right place with the right people that literally fell in love with me, you know, for who I was. They knew nothing really, really literally about my past or anything. And to, to them, it didn't really matter because they were skilled in cleaning people up. And you getting you where you need to be. It's that love. What he says, circumcision is, is profits you nothing. You know, trying to keep the law, trying to be having good morals. That's not, that's not the only thing that you need to do. There are some other things that need to be put in place. And I can tell you, they kept me safe for a long time. I didn't come back out into the public with, you know, with, you know, people just out in the community for, it was almost 20 years. It was a long time. It wasn't that I didn't desire it. I just love where I was at. I love the place that God had me in, but I noticed that they equipped me. He equipped me for what I'm doing now, you know? So um, a lot of those things, God unraveled all that confusion. Not saying that I don't still have some now, because there's still desires that I have in my life. And I still have to go back again. I got to learn how to serve while I wait. And that's one of the things that I did. Yes, ma'am, Miss Shelley. Okay, good morning. Sorry. Um, good morning. Uh, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a turn this into my little testimony Friday here because <laughs> okay. I hear I'm hearing Sheena's um, I'm, I'm trying to follow Sheena's little her heartbeat and what you're just saying and um, you know for me uh, this past couple of months I've had a job opportunity that came up and I was you know thinking about not doing it and and kind of just keep keep doing what I've been doing and trying to just push through and I you know, heard the voice of God clear as day. It was like, uh, take this, this is what I'm giving you. <laughs> you know, don't don't try to overthink it or um undermine it. Just just go with the flow. Go go with what I'm doing. So I accepted um the job offer. Um the schedule is a mid shift. I am I've never worked mid. I've always worked first shift or day shift, whatever you want to call it. Um when the sun goes down, Shelly goes to bed. So you know, this is definitely, you know, out of my norm, out of my, uh, my, my niche, I guess. Um, so I'm, I'm stepping definitely out on faith when it comes to the scheduling part of it. Um, I do have two kids. I have a 16 year old daughter and an eight year old son. Um, so the latter part of the day, she would have to, you know, basically step up a little bit and help me out. Um, thank God this is only for a year. Um, after that, you can, you can, you know, change your shift to whatever shift you desire. But for the first year, I guess for the grunts, for the freshmen coming in, we gotta just take what we get. So fast forwarding, um, so I accepted the offer. It starts next Friday, uh, will be my first day back to the corporate America, hallelujah. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, one of the things that I, I loved about this schedule and I was intentional about um, accepting the offer was the days off that I, I, I they gave me. Not that I requested, but they gave me. Y'all, when I tell you, I didn't want to take this job because I was afraid that this me serving in, in Maryland um, on Thursday nights, like that was going to be affected by it because obviously I'm working, you know, nights and the hours that that was there. 
Wednesday night Bible study, me and my family, we have a, a Zoom uh, family Bible study, which has been blowing up like families from that we haven't even really um, talked to in many years. They're now a part of the family um, Bible study. So I did not want to give that up. When I tell mm-hmm. you, I put that prayer out there. My days are for Wednesdays and Thursdays every day, every, you know, which are the two days that I'm serving in ministry, the two days that I'm being fed and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Um, he gave me those days. He could have gave me any other days off, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, but because I was intentional this time about the type of work that I want to do. And mind you now, this type of work is not in my, my field of expertise, but it is my, it is, it is what I'm good at naturally. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not what I went to school for, but it's what I'm good at. Mm-hmm. naturally without having to think blink so i'm and i'm getting paid y'all this, this is another cherry on top getting paid more money than what i was making in the field of expertise that i was in you know so he has just literally i mean when you serve god when you are doing it for real and you are intentional about your prayers with him your time with him everything will fall into place without you even have to beg for it. It will just fall into place. And all these little nooks and crannies that I wasn't even thinking about have now fell into place. So I'm excited about this new journey. Um, Sheena, uh, Sheena, I'm like you, I'll be on the road at two, three in the morning driving, but I'm, I'm excited for that because I know that's quiet time for me. That's going to be my time to really get into the word, listen to my worship music. I'm a worship singer. I'm a worship leader. So for me, I finally get that little quiet time to just belt out my sounds. And, you know, because I haven't been on a worship team in the last year. So, you know, that way I don't lose my voice. So look at every, that's what I was saying. Look at everything as a, as a positive, you know, all these things that are coming around us in this, in, in our lives. Um, yes, it looks bad and yes, it looks hard, but there's so many good things that are coming up that we have no idea that he's preparing you for. Um, so, you know, that's all I want to say. I'm just, I'm excited. You know, Sheena, I know it's going to happen. I feel it for you, mm-hmm. but it's mm-hmm. so much going. When it's so much on you, that's because there's so much coming. So just get ready, girl. Get ready. I'm telling you. <laughs> Thank y'all. Wonderful. Congratulations, Shelly, on that. Thank you. And, uh, and Shelly, <laughs> she really, she really has been serving. I know over here she has been, you know, being available. Um, and and I remember when Shelly uh, let go of the other job, you know, because it wasn't really fitting, you know, how it is. It wasn't fitting, you know, the I think her purpose or her need or whatever. And sometimes you have to make that decision to say you know what that's not it you know so that God can bring you the right thing that you need in and you could tell when God does it because it's, it's going to fit you and it's going to really fit you so I just you know continue to pray for Shelly and and Shelly I still still see you coming to Dallas Texas I still see that <laughs> but oh, like you it's say coming. it's coming yeah, they have a corporate office there trust me I'm, I'm gonna do so good here that the transfer Amen. to Dallas Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And you know what? That's a that's a stage of development. Also, you know, I would say to y'all, put y'all some maybe three year goals together, two to three year goals. Those are long term to me. You know, maybe two to three year goals of things that you would like to see happen, and then you're gonna have to start. You know, on a seed level and allow God to continue to keep building. I say to you, don't lose focus of Scott because sometimes God can bless your socks off so well that if you um, if you haven't uh, remembered who the source is, we forget about God in the process of it. So you don't want to forget him. You know, you want to definitely be thankful of these times that you guys have been sowing. And, and what I mean, sowing, not just monetarily, but you've been showing up you know, there's going to be a reward to a lot of these things. You know, if it's not already there with you now, it's going to be a lot of rewards. But once you get it, please don't forget what actually got you to that place, you know. And um, because and I'm telling you, it's going to take the same thing to keep you. Same thing. All, all the Lord was saying was, you just in the right vein. And you don't move out of the vein trying to go do what we want to do. We stay in the vein. And one of the things I've learned how to do is serve in the midst of all these things that are going on. So, amen. Good one, Shelly. Good one. 
Anybody else this morning? Let me see the comments. Everybody saying congratulations, congratulations. That's right. Never forget, never forget the source. Amen. Amen. Shannon, Shannon says, um, Shannon put a comment in yesterday too. I want to get back to Shannon says, when I'm working, uh, he feels like he gave me an idea on where to look, where I'm looking for something before frustration sets in. That's that's a good one. When you start putting God first. You know, one of the things I do, and I think sometimes it frustrates people that are in a hurry all the time. I learned a long time ago. I used to be just, you know, uh, quick on the draw with a lot. And I don't do that anymore. God had to break me from that stuff because a lot of times, one, when you're always that one, you know, that, you know, have the answers and always, you know, wanted, you know wanting to. Yeah, I don't know, I think it's just in our heart to serve or whatever, you'll start becoming overwhelmed because it's your gift that's making room for you. But you're, you, if you haven't learned how to uh, appropriate that gift, sometimes when you don't know what's working in you, other people will see it and they will begin to start, you know, kind of using it a little bit. But you got to make sure that thing is working for you as well. So a lot of times I too, like Shelly said, uh, when when God gives me an idea about something, it used to be that I would, man, I would take our run or if somebody, you know, they had some things that they need to do and I knew nobody else wasn't going to do it. I would always jump out and be the one that would do it. I don't do that anymore. If the Lord didn't tell me that that was my assignment, I don't do it because I have learned something about people. If they start seeing you doing it, they're not going to do it. And they get comfortable hearing everybody else's voice and watching other people do it and they're not you're not giving them an ex a time to exercise their own gifts i think i learned that through my children as well you know i tell them every little step if they need you they will call you about some things and on the job and i know it will frustrate people to death because they want people just to jump out that you see an issue something need to be done or whatever the case may be if this is in listen the place that I'm supposed to be in or the, um, you know, um, like like the job assignment that I have or whatever, and this thing is aligning with that, I try to stay with that in that alignment and not start jumping over there to everybody because I notice they will do that. Jobs do it every day. They start assigning you all kinds of things when, you know, you don't, you know, and, and next thing you know, you're all confused. You're looking for something and can't find it because you got too many things on you. No, I want to be, to be able to be effective. What I, I do believe that even in your uh, fasting time, if you guys are having any problems like that to where the, the people are pulling on you a whole lot, I say to you, pray for the right leader around you. Pray that your boss has your best interest at heart and that he knows you, she knows you. They know when to stretch you and they know when to allow time for you to grow. They don't keep pouring things on you because you know everybody needs something done. They they come dump things on you. That's that's not that's not good time management, and that's not good delegating. Because eventually you're gonna you know if you're that one that's a people pleaser, and people start um, doing that, either you're gonna get frustrated with them at some point. You know, because you don't think they care about you. And then all of a sudden it's going to be a, a, a lack of motivation on the job is because people were not caring for you. Same thing in your home. That's what happened with us with our kids. When we feel like kids don't appreciate things we're doing or, you know, our loved one, there's a lack of motivation. Everybody has to get involved in the process, you know. And sometimes what, what, what God may be calling for us to do is also to speak up about some things. Learn, learn your voice. Know when to use your voice. Because you don't have to just accept everything. Amen. <clears throat> Anybody else today? Amen. I think that's an area that we all are probably having to, um, or everybody's having to deal with at some point is, um, you know, time management, learning how to delegate things, you know, uh, because you feel overwhelmed all the time. You don't feel like you have enough time for yourself. 
is always jumping here. You find out why you keep jumping to those things all the time. Because listen, serving and filling up time are two different things. And a lot of times we're trying to occupy ourselves by filling it up with all this different stuff, but the stuff is not matching what God has asked you to do. Time, man time management and learning how to employ myself was huge for me. Yeah. Learning how to, how to, you know, learning, learning to hear from God what belongs to you. Because nine times out of 10, before an individual comes to you, God has already spoken to you. Same thing with you. If it's something that you're desiring on the job, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's really God doing it. He's been so, talking to your leaders about it too, especially like in the church. And people start saying, well, the Lord told me to do this. If the Lord really said it, he's going to give confirmation to someone else too at the same time. He give confirmation and it makes the, it makes the process not so frustrating. And uh, it's always good to you know, work hand in hand. Another thing I want you guys to listen for, um, before you start going out there trying to help everybody, especially if any of you are wanting to become life coaches or whatever, you don't take every client. You have to listen for a rhythm. Even in distress, there's a rhythm. Because by the time a person comes into counseling or they come into life coaching sessions, they're there for a reason. If they're not there for a reason, they're going to frustrate you and you're going to frustrate them. Not a good fit. But I do believe if it is meant for that to happen, God going to get all the minds and hearts together on one accord. I say to you, don't move until you know that water is clear. Don't just, don't just take any relationship, same thing. Don't just get into a relationship for the sake of being in a relationship. Wait until the water is clear. Wait until, wait until the pieces start coming together. Because sometimes you're starting off with raw material and people are trying to figure out where they are. You're trying to figure out where you are, but it doesn't come together until the meeting of the minds come in. Sometimes God just giving you that leap to let you know that I heard your prayers, but it ain't time for you to hook up with that just yet. Not just yet. Because you already have a lot of confusion within you. What do you think you're going to do when you get in somebody else's life? Time management. I got, God has assigned you to some other things. Stay it, stay the course over there. And while you over there doing what God asked you to do, God will make crooked places straight. I guarantee you. Don't frustrate the grace of God by what, what Paul said, he said, you, you're using this as an occasion. Don't use it as an occasion to sin because you know the grace of God is there. Well, God will change it around if it need to be. Don't frustrate yourself with that because you don't know how long it's going to take for that to change. Let God do the work. Let him open up the door for you and you walk in. You already know it's safe passage then because otherwise you're going to get in there and you're going to be working hard. All because it wasn't, it wasn't ready. It wasn't ready for you. And you got to think of yourself very well, ladies. Think of yourself as valuable. The Lord's not going to bring me any junk. He's going to bring his best to his daughters, best to his sons. But there's a place of discipline that we have to have in our lives not to jump too quick. So if you got a lot of anxieties up on you, find out where the anxiety is coming from. Most time it's a derivative of fear. What are you fearing? If I don't do it right now, it ain't gonna never happen. Who said it? And how long have you been walking in that type of fear? Because if you've been walking it for a long time, it's pretty strong and it's got a stronghold. And now you have to loosen up that ground with worship. Worship is water. It's got to loosen that ground. That's what's happening while you're planting seeds and things are not sprouting up the way they should is because something has been there a long time and you have to water that thing you have to plow that thing just a little bit more water it with your tears water it with your worship let the lord break it up the way it needs to be broken so that there can be a fresh flow that moves through there amen kathy said i'm learning that how to use my voice and delegating things yeah yeah learning how to man time management that's a lot of it 
Amen. All right, guys. All right. We're going to go ahead and get ready to dismiss this morning. Uh, let me pull up next week's session on what we're going to be talking about. Um, all still in the in the vein of prayer. And uh, I hope that, you know, y'all know my method is always wax on, wax off. It looked like one thing, but as you keep going, um, you know, you'll, you'll get it. The second week we're talking about strengthening our walk during tough times. And all it's saying is you'll win if you don't quit. Where do I need to put my focus? Maybe my focus is where God wants to be at. And that's not where he wants me at right now. I'm following him, but I'm learning how to wait on God to open up the door for me during tough times. That may be your season of life. It's in that season of discovering, discovering things about yourself. And ain't nothing, ain't nothing worse than you seeing something that you desire and you can't have it just yet. But it's like, but I see it, God. And the Lord said, the only way you get this is when you start, you continue to keep following me. Tough times. Cause you, you listen, you, what you fix to do is pull back attitudes and behaviors, all that. Remember Proverbs 24, do your outside works first, make it fit for yourself, then have smooth passage and build your barns. Do your outside work, work pay attention to what's going on with you rough time. I've been here before. Every time I fast, I'm on the same thing, strengthening your walk during tough times. Get the get the get the get what you need to grow from, and then watch God begin to start releasing. He he'll never put more on you than what you can bear. Never more on you, Amen. So this weekend, I pray that you guys are are strengthening your conversation with God, and you you learn how to pray. You learn how to talk to God. You know, Lord, Your Word said such and such. You know. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I'm more than enough. I thank you that I'm fearfully, wonderfully made. Put those affirmations in there, posting up all around you. And before long, the change take place. You don't even know how it took place because God don't want you to take the credit for it. That may be one thing you're working, working on. Stop taking God's glory for things that he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He know how to do it. And he, he know how to get you busy so that you don't be over there watching when I'm wrapping gifts. <laughs> and trying to figure out what's in the box. But you'd be surprised when you get it, but it fits you so well, amen. All right, guys, well, I look forward to seeing you guys back next week. If you guys wanna invite anybody in, be sure to send them to the website, get them registered, get them uh, connected in, and we'll be back next week to, to deal with that. Remember tomorrow, we got a jewel in his crown. Y'all, Mrs. Mitris Mosley is gonna be speaking tomorrow and Teresa Page. I got a chance to talk to both of them the other day and they are excited about this session here. They're talking about a jewel in the mud and a jewel in the crown. So come on in. I think this book is a piece of the puzzle of us walking through some things as well. It's like wax on, wax off. May not make no sense right now, but as you're coming in, the book is unfolding and helping us to uh, discover our value once again. So we invite you guys to join in with us at nine o'clock in the morning, Central Standard Time from nine to 11. And I hope that it blesses you guys as well. Until then, you all be blessed. I'll meet you back again on Monday morning at six o'clock a.m. in Jesus' name. Don't forget those of you that would like to sow, y'all can go to the website and you can give as God has placed on your heart to give in Jesus' name, amen.